man, am I interested in talking about this here today. So I was on my own YouTube channel watching my own videos. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't do this often. I don't watch my own stuff. I think a lot of content creators can kind of attribute to that. It's weird watching your own YouTube videos. But because I was interested in taking a trip down memory lane, I was like, okay, hey, let's go back and review what was the best month of my YouTube channel's history, June 2019. The month where the NHL entry draft happened, the month where I made videos on every Canucks pick, the month where we had so many trade rumors about picks and prospects and who would be drafted where, etc. And it was just an overall huge explosion of information and videos and views and subs and comments and money. So obviously that time period holds a very special spot in my heart but because i was in a very nostalgic mood i was like hey let's take a look at some of the videos we made back then and i stumbled across this video over here the video where we talked about the jt miller trade and the hatred that that trade sparked amongst the fan base and let's just say for the sake of argument the media and this video was so, so funny to me to rewatch it because I sounded very sad, very somber. I was trying to open up myself and let my opinions be known in a way that wouldn't piss people off. Because lo and behold, that was the second video I made about the JT Miller trade. The first one was a video talking about the trade itself. The first video I made about the JT Miller trade, I was really happy. I was like, yo, we just got JT Miller. That's crazy. But the way I talked about it wasn't really the best. And the comments were like, yo, how, why are you happy about this? This sucks. We just gave up a first round pick for a guy that was on the third line in Tampa Bay. Are you serious? So that's why the second video, the hatred video, was very somber, it was very soft. I was trying to make people listen to what I had to say without getting upset. But I wanted to follow up that video because my oh my, the takes, the takes, these are very, very interesting takes. So let's get into why exactly people hated the JT Miller trade back then. And pretty much we already talked about it in this video as to why people didn't like it. But essentially, people who didn't like the trade had the point of view that the JT Miller trade was the Vancouver Canucks sending away what was essentially a first round pick. Don't get me wrong, there was other stuff included in that trade too, Merrick Mazanich the third, I know. But it was the first round pick in exchange for a player that the Tampa Bay Lightning were trying to get rid of. And they were trying to get rid of this player because he cost $5.25 million for the next few years. Now, that's not a terrible contract, but the fact is the Lightning at the time were in a cap crunch. They needed to re-sign some of their guys, and with Kucherov and Hedman and Stamkos and Vasilevsky, all on your team, you can see why there's going to be a problem when it comes to freeing up money. So the Vancouver Canucks were in a position where they traded away what was a first round pick and other stuff for a player that the Tampa Bay Lightning were actively willing to get rid of. It's not like the Lightning were in a very strong position of adamance to keep JT Miller. They were open with giving him up, and instead of trying to bargain with the Lightning, the Canucks were just like, okay, here, a first, take this. And a lot of Canucks fans didn't like that because the immediate reaction on the trade was that the Canucks, lo and behold, overpaid. Now, I didn't really agree with that because in my opinion, JT Miller was a guy who was very good and who could bring a lot of really good assets to this Vancouver Canucks team. And in my point of view, I was saying initially, hey, you know, a first round pick is valuable, but a JT Miller like player is also valuable. So I was okay with it. I was like, yeah, you got to give up value to get value. That's how trading has always worked. Not every trade you make is going to be a steal for your team. Not every trade can be a good Branson for Tanner Pearson trade, if you get what I'm saying. 
but I made the second video to reiterate my points on how the values and all that stuff are coming together and how JT Miller is a good 60 point player. A lot of people in my comments said, yeah, you know, JT Miller is good, but I just don't like that they overpaid for that kind of player. And that's okay. I can totally understand why people would say something like that, because at the time when JT Miller was traded, he was coming off of a pretty... 47 point season in 75 games with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Sure, he was on the third line, but at the same time, a first round pick is very valuable in the eyes of Canucks fans. They see these as an opportunity to get another Besser, a Pedersen, a Hughes, or even an Ole Olevi. How about that? Obviously, I'm joking, but there was indeed a very strong hatred for the trade and the assets involved within the trade. But taking a look at that trade today, after what was a full season of Vancouver Canucks hockey, I think there is nobody who dislikes this trade anymore. Now sure, some people may be disappointed the Canucks don't have their first round pick, and that's completely understandable. But I don't know if there's anybody in this fan base that can say that JT Miller is not a good return anymore. Because JT Miller was a guy who, back in September, a lot of Canucks fans were saying, hey, if he can get 50 points, then awesome. This guy can contribute in the same way that he did in Tampa Bay. He can add another dynamic to this team. He can be a PK guy and an all forward situation kind of player. If he gets 50 points, then great. But JT Miller was over a point per game. He led the Canucks in points. He was on pace for 85 points. This guy shattered his career highs in goals, assists, and points all in one season. Bro, this is an 80 point player and he's under contract till 2023 at $5.25 million. My goodness. He is also only 27 years old. He's only a few years older than Bo Horvat. What the heck? The Vancouver Canucks first round pick in 2020 or 2021 is a valuable piece, yes. But could you say that a JT Miller today is kind of what the best case scenario would be if the Canucks actually used that draft pick? Imagine if the Canucks didn't make the JT Miller trade and they still had that draft pick and that draft pick turns out to be somebody who is a little bit worse than a JT Miller. He's a 60 point guy by the time he's 26, 27 years old. That's the kind of pick that Vancouver Canucks fans would say is a good pick. And they used up that pick to get a 70, 80 point caliber player now. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't want to say that Jim Benning is a genius or anything, but there's certainly more than meets the eye when it comes to how JT Miller was performing last season and how he stepped his game up this season. Obviously, one year of NHL experience can make a difference, but the guy is honestly kind of a vet now, and he's only 27 years old. Sure, he was used on the third line in Tampa, but playing in Vancouver was such an eye-opener to the rest of the league as to how good this player can be. There were some nights where he was legitimately the best player on the ice. And when it comes to Hughes and Markstrom and Petey, Miller is inserted right in that conversation on who was the team MVP. So, I think... Taking a look at how JT Miller has played in his first season, I don't know anybody who's still hating on that JT Miller trade. Sure, a first round pick is nice, but if that first round pick turns out into a player like JT Miller, then you would say that that pick is a steal. So the fact that the Canucks got rid of a third round pick, which that really does suck because the third round pick could have been very valuable, Merrick Mazanich, who the Canucks don't really need in their system, and a first round pick that is somewhat valuable, in return for a guy who is as valuable as JT Miller, oh boy, I think I love this trade more now than I did back when the Canucks initially made it. And that's something that I honestly cannot have envisioned. Seriously, I predicted this guy to get like 55 points. 85 point pace is incredible. 
oh man, I love this. I love this. I can't wait to see what the future holds for JT Miller. And I know the majority of the people watching this video can't wait either. So comment down below what you think about the trade. What was your reaction once the trade was made? I already said mine. I was on board, but I saw everybody on Twitter and in my comments hating this trade. So I want you to comment down in the comments below. What was your reaction when the Canucks made that trade at the draft? I hope you enjoyed this video. Social Life Trolls 99 and bye. <laughs>